You know, I, I have been uh, had those terms hurled at me by some uh, political leaders in the city, um, using terms like Hitler and fascist. Uh, my answer is uh, no. Uh, I know um, what uh, Hitler has done, and I know what a fascist uh, regime looks like. I think, as I've called over and over again, that um, the level of conversation, I think we could all dial down the temperature. And I've heard people say that uh, the uh, former president should not be able to have a rally in Madison Square Garden. I strongly disagree. Uh, this is America. This is New York. Uh, and I think it's important that we allow individuals to exercise their right uh, to uh, get their message uh, clear to New Yorkers. And our job as a city and as a police department is to make sure they can do that in a peaceful, in a peaceful way. Uh, I think that we must be extremely uh, cautious of the heat we turn up today, pre-election, is going to have to be the heat we're going to have to govern it. And I think we need to show a level of respectable communication. And so uh, when people called me uh, fascist and other terminologies, uh, I didn't like it. Um, and I don't think it's uh, fitting to uh, anyone to state that um, the former president is, is, is equal to being hit. I want to thank Mayor Adams, because Mayor Adams has been treated pretty badly. You know, when he said that this whole thing with the migrants coming into New York, this is just not sustainable. You know, we can't do it. We're trying to run a city. We've got 100,000 migrants coming. We, gotta, we can't do it. We just can't do it. It's not feasible. It's not, not good. He said it very nicely. I said, well, he's going to be indicted by these lunatics for saying that. A year later, he got indicted. I think they upgraded his seat in an airplane. I had this is a very serious charge. They've upgraded my seat a lot too. I used to fly commercial. I don't fly it so much anymore. But they'd see me back there and sure, would you like an upgrade? I don't know. Like maybe it's something else. But I have to tell you, he's been really great. And he said that uh, they shouldn't be calling Trump a dictator because it's not true. That's nice. That was nice. Very nice. So we want to thank Mayor Adams for going through a hard time with these people. These are lunatics, by the way. They've weaponized the Justice Department against their political opponent. I am under investigation more than the great, late Alphonse Capone. The momentum appears to be with Donald Trump right now. Peter McGorn, he's at uh, Madison Square Garden today, a massive crowd. In New York, though, it's not a, a seat where you'd expect 
uh, not, not an, a, uh, it's not a battleground electorate, that's for sure. Yeah, the excitement factor is all with Donald Trump. Now, we discussed this last Monday. We spoke about the, the brilliance and the optics of the McDonald's uh, survey by uh, the, the candidate and his confidence would have been built. I'm, I'm afraid that you've got to use some judgment now. You can only go to the polls so often and they're still, they're, they're still indivisible almost, although I, I think Trump's always underreported in the polls, which would give him a lead in, swing, in the swing states, not nationally. But when you look at the way the, different, the two candidates are being received, who's turning out, uh, where the money's now going in, in, in support of their campaigns, I think you've got to use your political judgment and call it for Donald J. Trump. D that's what uh, you have done. That's what Peter McGoran has done. Simon Banks, uh, you're suggesting the polls remain, and I think uh, many agree with you, that the polls are still too close to be uh, making a call right now, Simon. Yeah, that's right. And look, I mean, the one thing you need to remember about the US system, of course, is that it's actually about voter turnout not just who people say that they're inclined to vote for one way or the other. Look, I think uh, the Harris campaign probably peaked about a month ago. I think the momentum is with Trump at the moment. If you look at those seven key swing states, he's just very, very slightly, but still within the margin of error in front in three of those states. There are four that are literally a deadlock tie in terms of the polls. He really only needs one of them, for example, Pennsylvania. Uh, to come his way and he's in the presidency. So I've been saying for some weeks, I agree with Peter, I think Trump's, this is his to lose now, uh, but we're into that final week and I think as we saw in Queensland, you can't just uh, assume that the final week of a campaign goes smoothly for either side. It's really going to be a question of who can get that final bit of momentum in the last few days. And uh, Beyonce, if she uh, makes her intervention as expected, Peter McGowan, Celebrities come and go. Beyonce is at a sort of different level for many, though. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, but she's a Houston girl, and t Houston and Texas is locked in for, for Trump. Um, I, I agree with Simon. It's a voluntary voting system. Uh, but the Republicans this time around have learnt the lesson from the 2020 uh, campaign. They've got their people out voting early. I could never understand at the last election why they were relying on their uh, supporters to come out on yeah. election day itself. You know, if someone got sick or there was transport problems, they have got out a mm. very large proportion of their supporters already. We will see, gentlemen. Uh, look forward to catching up with you both next week. Thanks as always, Peter McGoran and Simon Banks. Thank you. Pleasure.